Hello, good citizens. My name is Dan. In this video, I'm going to show you the process of a third party complaint as per the British Columbia Police Act and the Office of the Police Complaint Commissioner. And for the rest of this video, I'm going to refer to them as the OPCC. In my previous videos about the OPCC, I exposed how the statistics on their own website prove that there's an extreme bias against registered and unregistered complaints made by the public. So here I'll expose how they treat third-party complaints made by the public. And you, my friends, are in for a treat. Here we go. Now I should point out that this only pertains to municipal police departments in British Columbia. RCMP complaints do not go through the OPCC. The OPCC calls themselves a, quote, impartial transparent civilian oversight, unquote. And the OPCC is responsible for the administration of discipline and proceedings under the Police Act. So in the province of British Columbia, there is an option to make a third party complaint and the British Columbia Police Act describes that as follows. So according to section 78, subsection 1, C, a complaint concerning the conduct of a member that is alleged to constitute misconduct may be made to and registered with the police complaint commissioner by a third party complainant. So Bruce Dean and I attempted to serve a summons on Greg Horanowicz, Vic PD badge number 422, and I had called ahead to make sure I would be there when Greg was working. Upon arrival, approximately 10 minutes before Greg was off work, I observed Greg in his civilian clothes fleeing the area of the Victoria Police Department, knowing through personal experience that members of the Victoria Police Department will make numerous attempts to evade service of a legal document. I pursued Greg, running scared, with three cameras rolling. After a few minutes of chase up a street and through a large parking lot, a small police force came running up behind me, calling out my last name. And when one Victoria Police Department officer caught up to the chase, he blocked and obstructed my legal duty to serve Greg with a summons. Once Greg finally felt safe enough with a wall of two armed officers, he took the summons. He then changed direction and was now walking towards me. So I asked Greg, the criminal, if he had committed any more indictable offenses lately. Committed any more indictable offenses lately, Greg? Hey, hey, that's to which Greg responded by grabbing my hand and camera and pushing it down and then to the side and almost into the face of the blocking and obstructing officer. I demanded that Greg be arrested for assault, but as we all know, the laws don't apply to Greg and Greg was free to flee the scene after assaulting me and again changing directions. So this didn't work out as planned as Bruce Dean was still waiting for me back at the police department. As more and more police showed up, I was threatened with arrest and a criminal charge of criminal harassment, a serious indictable offense. Pretty funny considering I just got blocked and obstructed by the police for fulfilling my legal duty to serve Greg a summons and was then assaulted by Greg right under the noses of two uniformed police officers. So now, I personally do not make complaints against the police. And that's because through my own investigations, I've proved that the OPCC has an extreme bias towards complaints made by the public. They don't have the authority to act in the province of British Columbia, and they've committed fraud against the public trust. So I don't see any point in making a complaint just for them to find in favor of the police, therefore discrediting you, the complainant, in the process. Not only that, but the OPCC is made up mostly of retired law enforcement personnel, in case you didn't know. However... After watching the various camera angles of the assault multiple times, your fellow good citizen, Bruce Dean, decided to file a registered complaint with the OPCC as per the third party option as per the British Columbia Police Act. Mr. Dean has actually had success with this third party complaint process in the past and was even on the news twice about a lengthy complaint he won against former Victoria Police Department chief, the disgraced and discreditable Jamie Graham. Bruce Dean is a street photographer who says he's often harassed by police. He filed the first complaint against the chief. Dean alleged breach of public trust. That was found unsubstantiated and dismissed. He felt the chief's comments were highly inappropriate. I'm sure he's laughing at my perspective right now because I don't think he really has respect for the, the people and the, the citizens of the city. You knew that the protesters weren't that organized when on the ferry on the way over they all rented a bus? They all came over on a bus? 
and there was a cop driving the bus. Those few words launched a police act investigation when a Victoria man who was nowhere near the conference complained that Chief Graham breached the public trust by identifying an undercover officer. Bruce Dean has released the mayor's written decision and the investigation report. Oh, I was portrayed very negatively. It's, it's, it's understood, you know, some investigations have proven that, they, that that's one of the major things they do when you file a police complaint is they go and discredit the complainant and don't even investigate put out and don't even press charges when the charges against officers should be pressed, they, but they go ahead and discredit the, the complainant. At the time when Graham was still chief, Mr. Dean had observed Graham on TV in a press conference revealing the identity of an undercover capacity police officer publicly. <laughs> Great work, chief. And after a string of seemingly constant bumblings as a police chief, it seemed Mr. Dean's complaint was the final straw that led to the discreditable chief's inevitable early retirement from law enforcement <laughs> altogether. The disgraced former chief never actually got disciplined. However, former Victoria Mayor Dean Fortin did put a letter in the former chief's file, apparently. <laughs> That's how we do accountability in British Columbia. Bruce Dean, however, remained unsatisfied with the disciplinary measures. So, who better to make a third-party complaint, right? He's watched the three camera angles of me being assaulted multiple times. Not unlike observing a police chief on TV in a press conference discrediting the reputation of his police department. So that's what he did, which in turn caused the OPCC to contact me with the following email from investigative analyst Caitlin Johnson. And she says, Good afternoon, Dan. I'm writing to advise that our office has received a Police Act complaint in relation to an incident involving you and members of the Victoria Police Department on September 9, 2017. It is our understanding that the person who filed the complaint did not observe the events firsthand. I'm reaching out to you as I'm hoping to speak with you about the incident. Please let me know if you are willing to discuss the incident with our office. Kind regards, Caitlin Johnson. And I responded shortly after this email with the following. Hello, the previous complaints I've made have resulted in me being arrested, including an arrest attempt at my job, imprisoned, charged with a criminal offense, and put on bail conditions, intimidated on social media about testifying at a criminal trial, and had my personal information publicly disclosed, as well as evidence of a crime being destroyed all by the members I made complaints about. I further made complaints about that. I was told my complaints would not be looked into. Something about Section 88 of the Police Act not applying to certain people in very high-powered positions of public trust. These games have had serious effects on my relationship with my employer, as well as on my right to life, liberty, and security. All this because I asked for a little accountability? My life is not a game. Therefore, I do not make complaints against the police, nor would I ever participate in an open complaint. Thanks for the email, but should you receive any other Police Act complaints in relation to incidents involving me, feel free to reference this response instead of wasting your time, Dan. And although Mr. Dean's complaint was honest and accurate, it never went anywhere, as per this letter sent to... Mr. Dean, by the OPCC investigative analyst, Caitlin Johnson. To Mr. Bruce Dean, on September 25th, 2017, the OPCC received a copy of Mr. Bruce Dean's registered complaint describing his concerns with members of the Victoria Police Department on December 9th, 2017. Mr. Dean reported that on the date of the incident, he and Dan attended the Victoria Police Department headquarters to serve a legal document on Constable Greg Horonowicz. Dan dropped Mr. Dean off at the front entrance on Caledonia Avenue. Mr. Dean waited for Dan and then began to search for him. Mr. Dean observed what appeared to be all of the Victoria Police Department officers out on the street in the immediate area. Mr. Dean saw police officers on foot and in vehicles on Caledonia Avenue, Quadra Street, and Green Street. Mr. Dean reported that one officer pursued Dan while calling out Dan's last name, obstructed Dan, demanded that he leave the area, and then instructed Dan to walk away after he was allegedly assaulted by Constable Horonowicz. According to Mr. Dean, a second officer also obstructed Dan, 
refused to intervene when Constable Horanovich allegedly assaulted Dan and ignored his questions. Mr. Dean asserted that a third officer snuck up behind Dan and kicked his heels while he was walking. The officer reportedly, repeatedly and aggressively threatened Dan and advised him to attend the police station to file a complaint. The officer also pursued Dan and threatened to charge him with criminal harassment. Finally, Mr. Dean complained that Constable Horanovich changed direction and walked towards Dan after Dan served him with court documents. Dan asked Constable Horanovich, You haven't committed any more indictable offenses lately, have you, Greg? Constable Horanovich reportedly turned, grabbed Dan's left hand and camera, and forced both Dan's hands down and to the side and almost into the face of another officer. Limited to those specific types of misconduct outlined in the act, Mr. Dean's complaint does not describe conduct that falls within the definition of misconduct and therefore falls outside of the jurisdiction of the act. Accordingly, pursuant to section 81, subsection 1D of the Police Act, the following careful and serious consideration of Mr. Dean's complaint, we direct that no further action under Division 3 of the Police Act is required or necessary. Caitlin Johnson. So there you have it, folks. A police officer evading legal service who is protected by a wall of two armed officers can assault the server and walk away. And according to the OPCC, our one and only impartial, transparent civilian oversight, that's not misconduct. Let that sink in. Then leave a comment below on how you think the OPCC is handling police accountability in the province of British Columbia. And how do you feel about Greg Horanowicz being able to break the law? And not only do the laws not apply to Greg, but you can't even make a complaint against him for misconduct. I want to thank Bruce Dean. And check out his YouTube, Twitter, and Flickr links I'll leave in the description. So, if you've ever made a complaint against a municipal police officer in the province of British Columbia and wondered why your complaint was handled with an extreme bias, well, now you know why. It's because they've committed fraud against the public trust. If you'd like to learn more about the OPCC, check out Greg Klein's website called bcpolicecomplaints.org. I'll link it in the description as well. Thanks for watching.